What is up, guys? It's your book bitch. I'm back again a little bit later than I anticipated, but that's just what happens. That's life. That's me trying to do YouTube. Anyway, um, from here on out, it's going to still be a max of two videos per week, but there may be intermittent random weeks where there's nothing. So I'm hoping within the next 12 or so hours to get the invasion and uh, the visitor out for y'all, but if nothing else, you'll at least get this one, which is the invasion, and it's fairly near and dear to my heart, so here we go. This is an ever-changing series, so if you ever think that I'm going to only be sticking to what I said <laughs> originally, as far as like schedule goes, you clearly have not been here long enough. Check the back catalog. Check the dates on the back catalog. <laughs> All right, without further ado. Animorphs, number one, The Invasion by K.A. Applegate. This was the second book in the series that I read, even though it's the first book in the series, technically. Um, I was not as interested because, as you can see, it's a lizard and an owl on the front, and the inside cover is that. I don't know how well you can see that. If you can't see it that well, tough shit. <laughs> um, we all know my famously poor quality uh, video layout, video setup. If you don't like it, you can lump it. Oh, I've still got the page marked. But this, this right here in my hands, is my original copy, original copy of The Invasion. It's been through several room floodings, as evidenced by the fact that it's, it's literally just in tatters. Um, if I try to open it to actually see the page morph, if I'm not careful, pages will fly out. As, as I believe, a first edition, if not, it might... It, it's like it's a very very early printing like it's an original printing of the book um after i read the visitor my mom made sure to run out and buy all of the animorphs books that were currently available so i had a ton of reading to do pretty much immediately and i was a very very pleased child with that but yeah animorphs the invasion does it hold up yes it does um, like, it, it, it might be a little bit strange to, you know, conceptualize a bunch of teenagers or preteens, I think they're meant to be, like, early teenagers, just kind of wandering around on their own, no cell phones or whatever, but, you know, it's, it's a nice bit of nostalgia for, you know, someone who, up until freshman year of high school, didn't have a cell phone and only got a cell phone because there was a fire in my building, the apartment building I lived in, and that freaked my mom out because we had no way of contacting my dad who was still at work. <laughs> That's a story for another day. Maybe on the vlog channel if I ever bring it back. Woo, I don't know if it's ever coming back. <laughs> but yeah, oh, hi Joe. My cat's down here, if you can't tell. You probably can't tell. Yeah, I've got this copy. But the copy that I actually read, hold on, let me just flip my notebook so I can keep my page, is this bitch. The reprint. I absolutely loathe these covers. However, as a side note, I am trying to collect these covers. I only currently have The Invasion and The Visitor in these covers. If you happen to have access to those other ones, and you're willing to sell them to me at a fair price. I think they went up to like book six or book eight. Please let me know. I am on the hunt. And I mean, there's still like four or five books, three or four books towards the end of the series that I need, that I know I'm gonna have to pay ridiculous amounts to own. But for now, I'm trying to just, you know, fill in the collection anywhere I can. I'm also always open to duplicates, so if you've got a bunch of old ones and you don't want them anymore and you're willing to part with them for a fair price, let me know. My collection needs to grow. <laughs> anyway, 
back to the review. Animorphs, The Invasion. Whichever copy you grew up reading. It holds up. They did go back and change a couple of things that, you know, either just didn't work or were kind of idiosyncratic or just uh, learned later in, in science that, oh, that's not how that worked. And I do respect that, but I'm not fond of updating text once it's been published. So I do actually have a second copy of this printing. So I don't have, you know, just a tattered version that I'm really careful about opening. Like, look how stiff this thing is. It is so, like, it, it, it's ancient. <laughs> I love this, though. I love this series. And you can tell that this is a well-loved book from the series for me. But yeah, without any further ado, let's bring out the note book. <laughs> well, hello, Jimmy. Everyone, this is Jimmy, James Tiberius, Kirk the Cat. He's my boy. He's 14 years old. Maybe 13 years old. I'm not actually sure. He was born in 09. And he's my boy. He lived with my dad for about a decade. And now he's back with me. And he's currently really hurting my thigh. Jimmy. Darling. Thank you, baby. You're a good boy. Why don't you lay down next to Mama? You can listen while Mama talks about the book. Yes, my cats call me Mama. Shut up. The Invasion, Animorphs number one, is one of the only original copies of any of these books that I still own. I've had it for basically three decades now. And the copy that I have is very fragile, but it's still readable if you're careful. But it's not... A book that I would like loan out to people. There's a reason I have two other copies. I, I want this book to to hold for at least thirty more for thirty more years. As previously stated, this was indeed the second book in the series that I read, having begged my dad for the book with the kitty on it to start the series, which was actually book two, which I will hopefully be filming the review for in a few like, hours. All right. I remember not liking this one as much as number two, but I liked it well enough to continue the series, so... Spoilers, duh! Th this book is about 30 years old. <laughs> I didn't realize until this reread that specific... Or, this reread specifically that the sharing is so-called because you're sharing your head with a yerk. <laughs> 35 years old, probably read the books, or probably read books 1 through 25 or 1 through 30 at least 15 times each, and I only just realized this. It's shit like this that spurs me forth in this review series. There's still things to discover even 27 years later. I bet I just made some of you feel old. <laughs> I had forgotten that Jake and Dogmorph could smell the yerk and Tom. I'd also forgotten that Thermals were an in-series meme from book one. I could have sworn that was a later edition. Which, side note, I remember enthusing about Thermals to my mom in the car the first time I saw a bird of prey out lazily riding Thermals after reading a few of these books. And I remember my mom being confused and supportive of my, my hyper-babbling about my, uh, my, at the time, special interest. <laughs> I find it a little hard to believe that anyone would suspect Jake so intensely as Tom suspects him in regards to the fireworks in the construction site. Fireworks. So, book one, The Invasion, introduces us to five of the six Animorphs and sort of establishes Jake as a not fully reliable narrator. I mean, all of them really, but it's from Jake's perspective, so it, it especially does a good job of that. The five of them meet up at the mall, not having planned to do so, but then decide to walk home together as a group. They decide to take a shortcut through the construction site and accidentally abandon, or an apparently abandon, I can't read my own handwriting, clearly, <laughs> an apparently abandoned construction site, which is also apparently where the time matrix is hidden. Thanks, Elfanger. Also, if you haven't noticed, I'm never going to pronounce Elfanger's name the same way twice, and... That's partly done to piss you off, and partly done because I really couldn't give less of a shit. I pronounced it Hork-Bajir, 
or I pronounced it Hork Bajar for like 18 years, or Hork Bajar for like forever, so I don't give two shits about pronunciation. And if you're gonna be sticking around, you're gonna have to get used to that. As they're walking through the construction site, Elfanger's ship crash lands right in front of them. Elfanger gives them the rundown regarding the Yerks and gives them morphing powers before the Yerks arrive and Visser 3 devours the War Prince. The kids flee and it's not until Tobias shows up at Jake's or at Jake's house that he realizes this wasn't all just some weird crazy dream. Jake's first morph is his golden retriever Homer. After the first morph, they gather at Cassie's farm to discuss to discuss their next moves. They decide to think on it before deciding and then end up going to a sharing meeting with Tom. Jake does rec reconnaissance, I know I spelt that wrong, as the dog morph and discovers that Tom really suspects him, Tom, and that Chapman, the assistant principal, is also a controller. It's this loose mission that has them decide, beyond just Tobias, to jump into this war and try to stop the Yerks. Jake acquires his second morph, Anna Knoll, and proceeds to follow Chapman at school in hopes of learning more Yerk secrets. Chapman unwittingly leads him right to the Yerk pool. Speaking of morphs, I also, at the back here, have a chart with everyone's morphs. And I'm, it, it was because I was charting this that I very, very was like, what? Because there's so far two inconsistencies that I'm noticing, but that's going to be a, a later, it's going to be noticed at a later time in these reviews, but I'm just letting you know that probably around book four or five, I'm going to mention, oh, what? Hopefully I'll, I'll remember to mention it. If I don't comment it, yell at me. I still probably won't re remember to mention it, but you know, You'll have the justice of, haha, I made you ma I made you cry with my words. Or, you know, whatever. The Animorphs proceed to go to their local zoo, the gardens, to acquire further morphs. Tougher morphs, too. After Marco acquires a gorilla, security spots them and gives chase. They get away, however. But not without Marco and Jake ending up in a tiger cage where... Jake acquires a tiger and they still barely escape with skin, by the skin of their teeth. They mount an attack on the yerk pool when, when Jake's brother goes to let his yerk feed, but then they find that Cassie has been captured. It quickly dissolves into chaos and despite their best efforts, they only save Cassie and one human former controller. Tobias is basically an instant no nothlet, which a nothlet is someone who has stayed beyond their two-hour morph limit. Um, Elfanger also did the two-hour morph lit limit, y not lit thing, in uh, and Light Chronicles, which we just discussed, like five and a half weeks ago, but <laughs> which we just discussed, and that's how he ended up being a human on Earth for a while. Um, it's, I know it's like a, a theory that Tobias did that on purpose. I honestly think he did that on purpose. He saw an out from his shitty life because he didn't have the greatest home life. His mom had abandoned him. His dad was dead. <laughs> and he just decided to take it. And he didn't realize how badly he was kind of going to miss being human in some aspects. But that's story for later. There we go. Anyway, that's all the notes I have for book one, which is actually slightly more notes than I've been taking for a lot of them. But, yeah. I remember this one wasn't as interesting to me as the second book actually was, but, I mean, that kind of happens when you read a slightly more, like, oh, here's some actual plot and not just exposition, 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 like the first books, especially in um, Young Adult and the Beginning. And rereading it, I think I liked it a little more than I probably did as a kid because I know this was a book that I skipped a lot. But in my defense, a lot of what is said in this book is condensed throughout the entire rest of like at least this far in the series and this is like up to book six i think 
Book five, book five. This is up to book five. And like it, it, it's rehashed so often that you don't even really need to read that. Like how if you rewatch like an entire series, you often don't really need to watch the pilot if you've watched the series more than once or twice because so much of what is said in the pilot is rehashed and done better in the first season, even like in the second season. But yeah, I think it holds up. Um, I think it's still probably a good book to, to give to kids. It's more intense than I remember, but I mean, a lot of things I remember from my childhood are really rose-colored glasses. Like, so it, it, it it's very it's interesting to reread some of this older stuff that's just so mind-boggling like why would you give this to a like six or seven year old even though the six or seven year old begged for it <laughs> but yeah that's that's pretty much my review of the invasion i liked it i'm not terribly fond of reading from jake's perspective like his books his books and Tobias's early books really bored me. But a lot of the problem with that was that Tobias just, his depression is really apparent and it's really self-pity, mama, poor pitiful me. And it's kind of annoying. But now I can actually kind of appreciate the nuance put in there. But yeah, his books and Jake's books weren't really ever my favorites. Um, next review, we'll be reading, or we'll be talking about one of my favorite narrators. And actually, up until probably age 10 or 11, my favorite character. Then that changed to Axe, then it was Cassie, and now it's currently actually Cassie and Rachel. But <laughs> yeah, Rachel, Rachel's books were always my favorite. Starting with this one. <laughs> yeah, next next review is going to be the, the Visitor. Thanks for sticking around, guys. Um, I'm the book bitch. Put down the book and no one gets hurt. <laughs>